Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start by giving our praise, our honor, our glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful to let I came out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father seed line and your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp, coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah, another lesson. And this time I want to go into a, a, a lesson going into the glorification that we're going to receive that's fastly approaching, you know, because once again, like we always say, we see all the signs of the times coming to pass, letting us know what time we're living in, letting us know that Yahweh Shah's second coming is close, and with Yahweh Shah's second coming being close, our glorification, Lord will we be a part of that number, is close as well, man, you see, because... It was never the most high's will for us to stay in this condition forever. This is just a temporary state that we have to go through, have, we have to suffer through, you know, to enter into the fullness of Yahweh Shah's glory. But that is uh, fastly approaching. So I want to start here in Revelation 21 and 1. It says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And this is what you're witnessing taking place right now. You're witnessing the, uh, the age of the heathen, you see. Which ends with Esau. We're watching this come to an end. You see that? Those four beasts that we read about in the book of Daniel. We're at the uh, the end of that vision. And now a new heaven and a new earth is about to be ushered in by way of our Lord Yahweh Shah. A, uh, a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness reigns, man. You see? And this is what all of our righteous forefathers have been looking for, uh, looking for since the beginning. Let's get uh, real quick. 2 Peter 3. And 13, it says, what? Well, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth where in dwell of righteousness. And this is what we're reading about right here. We're reading about the transition from the uh, from the old world into the new world. You see that? What we're reading about is the beginning of that kingdom where in dwell of righteousness. The new, the, the new heaven and the new earth being established in the earth according to what the Most High has promised. You see? Because everything that we see around us, man, is about to be reset. Not according to what the uh, WEF is telling you. You see, they're, they're a great reset. No, we're talking about the great reset of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah. Where the Most High is going to hit the reset button on, on, on the earth and dismantle all society. He's going to dismantle all the uh, financial infrastructure. And he's going to start over from, uh, from scratch. With the Israelites being ahead and the rest of the nations being the tail. You see that? This is what's coming. This current world is about to pass away, and this is why we see it in the condition that we see it in. This is why we see war uh, ramping up in the earth, and, 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 and it's going to be full-blown war very soon. You see world war, civil war, so forth and so on. This That represents the end of a society, man, and that's what we're witnessing. Now, verse 2 goes on to say, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, Come down from the most high of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, this is who? This is talking about the elect that were beamed up from all the lands that we were scattered to. Lord, will we be a part of that number? And now, we've gone through the crowning ceremony. We've gone through the crowning ceremony, and now, we're coming down, and guess what we're about to do? We're about to take over the earth, as the most high has ordained. To get the earth going back into a righteous state, to put the heathen under our foot, to have the the throne of David fully established on this planet earth. This is what the apostle John is seeing. The remnant being gathered from all the lands that we were scattered to. And now, after that crowning ceremony and whatever we have to do in the heavens, as finished, we're going to come down and we're going to take over the planet, man. Verse 3 says what? And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men. And he will dwell with them, and, and they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. 
going into what? Going into that everlasting covenant that the Most High promised our forefather Abraham that he would bring us into. That's going to be done by way of Yahweh Shah. We're going to be brought into the fullness of the second covenant. Well, we're going to be fully tied back to the Most High. We're going to never sin again. We're never, never going to go off again. So that means we would. We would never die again. Making us what? Immortal. This is how we're coming back into the earth. Once we, you know what I'm saying? Once, once we descend out of the heavens. We're coming back as immortals. Fully tied back to our God, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shah. Now verse 4 says what? And the Most High will wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. You see that? And neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for all the former things are passed away. And that goes into what? The condition that we're in now. This is just a temporary state that we're in right now, man. You see? We're just suffering this for the glorification of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah when it's... And when, and, when he uh, sees fit to bring our suffering to an end by sending our Lord Yahweh Shah back, this is what we're coming into. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more death, no more crying. As he's promised us, man. And wait, what is he going to give us? That kingdom went and dwell of righteousness, which is going to be established on this planet Earth. You see, with the headquarters being in Jerusalem, you see, in the promised land that the Most High gave unto our forefather Abraham, our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to their seed after them for an everlasting possession. That's what's about to happen. You see? And we're going to be, and we're going to, and the, the blessings that we read about in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through uh, 14, that's what we're going to be brought into, the fullness of it. And what I want to do is go read through Isaiah 60, because Isaiah 60 let, shows you what it's going to be once we come into that glorified state. This is what's going to happen when we come down out of heaven. See, this, this goes right into what it says in Isaiah chapter 2. Micah chapter 4. You see? That's what it's talking about in Revelation 21. Us coming down and establish that kingdom where we dwell of righteousness. Where well, we're going to be in our glorified state. Where well, we're going to be the rulers of the earth. You see? Establishing righteousness on the earth by way of the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. We're going to execute it to the fullest. You see? No more of the madness that you see going on around you in this society. Like you see in this society. This shit is going to be a thing of the past, past because the age of the heathen has come to an end and now it's time for the age of righteousness to be ushered in. Now, when we go into Isaiah 60, let's get it. It says what? A glorified Zion. And that's talking about what? The elect first and foremost being brought into that being brought into the glory of Yahweh Shah. Now, let's read about. What is going to be once we finally come down out of heaven and start to get things established on the earth? Now, verse 1 says what? Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah has risen upon thee. See, this is happening now. See, we're already, look, that's crazy. We're already in the state of being glorified now. We're in the process of coming into the fullness of the glory. We just have to go through the trials and tribulations to get there. See, but the light of the Most High has already shined upon us because we have this vision now. We have this eyesight to see. We understand what's taking place on the earth, and that is all according to the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You see that? We're illuminated in this world of darkness, man. While everybody else, as it tells us in verse 2, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. And this is why everybody is in the spirit of moving however they see fit. I right, hear believing that. Kamala Harris is going to save America. Donald Trump is going to save America. You see that shit is just going to go back to normal and America is just going to continue to function on as it's always been doing. See, they're thinking that way because they're in darkness. They don't think any judgment is coming for their wicked behavior that they've been uh, conducting themselves in in the earth. It's because they're in darkness. You see, they, they, they talk shit to the men of the Lord. They look down upon the words of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. Why? It's because they're in darkness, man. And that's where the Most High is going to keep them. You see, gross darkness has covered the people completely. But it goes on to say what? But the but Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And that's what's happening. And guess what? As we go into these dark days ahead, just did a video on that the other day. As we go into these dark days, guess what? The glory of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to be seen upon his men more and more and more until it what? Until it manifests. Into those 
and, and to the elect of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah being beamed up into that chariot with our Lord Yahweh Shah in the midst of all of our all of our enemies. You see that? Verse 3 goes on to say, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy son shall come from far, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear. And be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Now this goes into... Once we finally come down out of heaven, like we read in Revelation 21. You see, the forces of the Gentile, which goes into the wealth of the Gentiles, is going to be turned over to us. The abundance of the sea is talking about what? The heathen nations being given over into our hands according to what? According to the Most High's will. You heathen nations will be our slaves in the kingdom of heaven. You see, in all the best of your resources, guess what you're going to do? You're going to come and offer it unto us as tribute. Because we're going to be the rulers in the earth. You see? We're going to be the authority. You see that? And you're going to have to answer to us. This is what's coming. We were never meant to stay in America forever, man. We were never meant to be doing these videos and being on the highways and byways for the rest of time. This is just a short portion, <laughs> you see, of prophecy that we have to fulfill. And then we're moving on to the next glory. You see? And then the ultimate glory, which is what? Being brought into Yahweh Shah's glory. Coming down and establishing this kingdom where and dwell of righteousness, as we're reading about here in Isaiah chapter 60. You see that? Now verse 6 says what? The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian shall come. I'm sorry, the, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. And they shall show forth the praises of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. This is the glory that we're coming into, man. Constant caravans of resources being being what? Brought into the land of Israel to present at the feet of the Israelites. You see? You got motherfuckers already talking about we're in the new covenant already. No, man, no, we're not. We're still under the curses. <laughs> you see, we we don't have caravans of goods coming to our coming to our doorsteps, man, being laid at our feet. We still punching the clock, living paycheck to paycheck, man. Having an answer to a goddamn uh, Edomite supervisor or what have you. See, this is going to happen in the kingdom of heaven, which is that this hasn't been fulfilled yet. So there's no way we could be in the second covenant. And, and, and ultimately, we still go off. We still sin, man. The second covenant that tells us being completely righteous, never sinning ever again. That's, what, that's why we're not going to die again, because we won't sin. We haven't been brought into this yet, man, for all you guys preaching that bullshit of, of we're already in the new, uh, the new covenant. That's not so. You see? See, the vision that we're reading about now is what Yahweh Shai is coming to bring us into. You see, in Russia, it, it, it never talks about no one rising up against this woman in this state. The fucking heathen wouldn't dare lift a finger up unto us once they witness us in our glorious state, man. It says what? And they shall show forth the praises of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Verse 7. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come with a, with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. What's the house of the Most High's glory? The house of Israel. You see, we are the vessels of glorification unto the Almighty God, Yahweh, man. You see that? We're the nation that the Most High set up to be set apart, so he could be glorified. By the heathen looking at us like, damn, the Most High has to be with these people. It tells you that in the book of Deuteronomy. That's the reason the Most High gave us the law, statutes, and commandments. Because we're the house, the only house on the earth that's set to, uh, to uplift Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. You see? So he's about to glorify us by bringing us into Yahweh Shah's glory. You see that? Verse 8 says what? 
Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? This is the type of level we're going to be brought into, man. We're going to be operating those chariots, those villains that we see in the heavens, man. This is what we're coming into. You see what Yahweh what Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh has promised to bring us into is not some low level, you see, type of thing that a lot of these Israelites think it is. You see? And, and, and they really think it's, it's low level because you hear how they you, you hear how they're speaking, man. See, they're speaking in a way that lets you know that they don't want to leave Babylon the great because they, they, they don't fully understand what Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shah is about to do. See, they're looking at it from a, 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 a mortal's standpoint, man. They're looking at it from a heathen's perspective. They're not looking at it through the eyes of a god, man. We're going to have chariots. These motherfuckers are talking about some damn Hebrews and a hellcat. Fuck a hellcat. You see? We're going to have vehicles that make, that make Hellcats like fucking Hot Wheels, man. You see? It doesn't compare. The glory that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is going to bring us into doesn't compare to anything that we've ever witnessed before, man. This is not some low-level type of thing, man. Let's show you Isaiah 64 real quick. Isaiah 64 and 4 says what? For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eye seen, O Most High. Beside thee, what he have prepared for him that waited for him. You see that? No one has ever seen the type of glory that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to bring his elect into first and foremost. You see? And with the elect being brought into it, it's going to cause the two thirds to be brought into it. After death by pain. Into, the, into that glory that we're going to receive. You see? And we're going to be on a different fucking level. You look at these celebrities now. They buying these fucking houses. And that shit. It, it looks nice. You know what I'm saying? It's, some of that shit is dope. Like damn that shit is kind of crazy. But when you look at that. That shit falls far short. Of what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to bring his people into, man. This is what we're telling you. you, you uh, a lot of Israelites really can't... Gra they don't have a, a, a ruling class mentality, man. They have a very, very, very base way of thinking. You see? And this is why some of these guys pervert the doctrine and say, Oh, America is the promised land. You know why? It's because they don't want to leave this place because they can't see nothing past America. See, but the remnant, we have a different type of vision, man. You see? We have the vision of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. We know and understand that it's going to be way beyond anything that we've ever seen before, experienced before, man. The most I tell you that he's going to give us the desires of our heart. And shit, we don't even fully know what we want. The most I knows all our deepest, darkest desires, man. He said we're gonna we're gonna, we, he's going to be able to give us that in the kingdom of heaven with no hesitation. This is what we're coming into, man. This is what we're longing for. Not this low level as existence that we're experiencing now, man. Think you're doing something because what? You got a 150K uh, a year job? That ain't shit. We're going to have innumerable wealth in the kingdom of heaven. You see, vast amounts of land, man. Vast resources. Substance, livestock. We're going to have all that. You see? We're going to be immortal. And, and some Israelites can't even grasp the concept of immortality. We're going to be made like Yahweh Shai is, man. We're never going to die again. That's what we're coming into. This is what the true believers are longing to be brought into. And that's what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is about to execute. You see? This is not some low level type of thing, man. You got to think outside of the box. You got a lot of these fucking Israelites that's trying to put the most out of the box where talking about ain't no, ain't no, ain't no miracles, ain't no chariots. You niggas have lost the battle already, man. Because like the scriptures tell you, there's nothing impossible for the most high. The most high can do whatever he want to do, man. Don't you understand that this world, that you, this whole existence that you've been experienced, it came from the mind of the most high. He created all this. You see? 
before you, before the Almighty God Yahweh put Yahweh Shai in charge, none of this existed. It was nothing out here. All this came from the mind of the Most High, the ocean, the animals, the trees, so forth and so on. All the different operations of, of how everything works. You see? How life is created. That was all of the Most High, man. So there is nothing impossible for the Most High to do. And a lot of Israelites have not come up on that way, uh, up on that level, that type of level of faith yet, man. And it's a damn shame because we're at the end. <laughs> And these prophecies that we've been going through for all this time, these things are about to come to pass. And you still got some Israelites that's still at the starting line, man. You see? Way behind. It goes in the same verse 9. Surely the isle shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, thy silver and their gold with them, unto the name of Yahweh thy power, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he have glorified thee. Once again, constant caravans of the heathen nations bringing gold and silver and precious uh, uh, minerals or materials into our land, man. You see? Why? Because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to glorify us and bring us into that what? Into, the, into that second covenant, which allows us to be brought into the fullness of the blessings that we read about in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. You see that? Now listen. Verse 10 says what? And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. You see that? The heathen nations are going to minister unto us, meaning what? They're going to be our servants. They're going to be our slaves. They're going to build up our walls. They're going to build our palaces. They're going to take care of our vineyards. They're going to tend to our livestock, man. You see, because we're going to go from uh, from being in the servitude state here in Babylon and great and all throughout the earth to being the royalty, man. From to, to being the ones who are calling the shots, who are giving the orders. You see, and we're going to go from being the tail to the head as it tells you in the blessings. That's what's coming. You see, and for all you heathen who, who think that this is a joke, like God, guys like Vocab Malone, let's see, what, let's see what the scriptures say about that, man. This is Psalms 140, yo, Psalms 149 and 5, it says, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. And this is going to happen in the, in the kingdom of heaven, man, while we're in our, in our rest. You see, because that's what beds represent, being in your rest. <clears throat> Verse 6 says what? Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and their two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the heathen. You see that? And punishments upon the people according to what? According to what the Most High has spoken. Verse 8. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. So if the kings and nobles of you heathen nations are going into slavery, what does that say about the rest of you heathen? You lower level heathen. You're going into slavery right along with your kings and your nobles. And you're going to tend... To everything that we need you to tend to. You're gonna be in our you're gonna be in our kitchens cooking. Once hey, you're gonna be out there tending to our vineyards. You see? You're gonna be tending to our gardens. You see, you're gonna be our what? Our, our handmaids and, 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 and bondmen, man. To do the bidding of the Israelites in our kingdom. Verse 9 says what? To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. You see? And every Israelite will be able to partake in this eventually. Now, let's go back to Isaiah 60. Matter of fact, let's get lucky. Isaiah 61, it says what? And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. The strangers here is talking about who? You heathen nations. All of you heathen outside of the nation of Israel. You are going to be put to work by the Israelites. You see that? This is glory here, man. Where you have servants waiting on you hand and foot. Hey, that's what the elite of this world have. You see? See, we're going to have the same thing, but we're going to do it in righteousness, man. You see that? Now we go back. 
uh, verse 11 says what? Thy gates. Now, oh, hold up. Now, this is a cut to those clowns talking about uh, Russia is going to rise up and come up against Israel or whatever. You see? But it tells us, Isaiah 16 and 11, Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. You know why? It's because we're going to be that safe and secure in our kingdom. No nation is going to dare try to lift up a hand against the Israelites once we're in our power. We're going to have the new bodies. We're going to have spiritual power. We're going to be fully tied to the Most High, man. And you see what happens when Israel, when, when the Most High and Israel are fully tied together. Uh, what, what, was, what was the battle? I think uh, it was the second time we went up against I, and the Most High was finally with us. And it told you the Most High destroyed more, the, more of the people of I than we did. That's what the Most High does when he's on our side, man. So the heathen won't fucking dare try to have an uprising against the Israelites. Not with Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, and the Israelites fully on one accord again. <laughs> you see? See, the most I was rain, raining down hailstones from heaven, bashing them niggas up. That's the type of shit that's going to be happening in the kingdom of heaven. You see? <laughs> We're going to be on a different type of level, man. You can't keep looking at it from this, this, this low as, this low vibrational, with this low vibrational viewpoint, man. I hate to use that word vibrational, <laughs> but that's the only thing I could come up with. But you can't be looking at it with this, 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 this low level way of thinking, man. We're going to be on a different fucking level. You see, and some guys are, are, are so, uh, how can I say it, man? Like they, they just can't grasp the, the concept of, of, of just being supreme. You, you know, like like some of these guys just just they just ain't got it, man. We're going to be supreme. Everything we do is going to be perfect. It's like when you create a fucking a creative plan on, on Madden, you put you put the stats all the way up. He has no flaws. He's the fastest, the strongest, the biggest, so forth and so on. That's how we're going to be in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to have all the power, the new bodies. You see, we're going to be perfect. We're not going to have one flaw. You see, not one birth defect. None of that. All that shit is left here in this kingdom. This is how the most High created the Israelites to be, to be perfect, to be in, in, in the image of the most high. The Most High is perfect, so guess what he's going to do for his children through Yahweh Shai? He's going to make us perfect. No flaws at all. You see? You won't so much as stub your toe in the kingdom of heaven. That's how perfect we're going to be. If basketball is a thing in the kingdom of heaven, we could go 10,000 for 10,000. Never miss. Without even having to look at the goal. It's shooting shit backwards. 10,000 for 10,000. Not saying that basketball is going to be a thing in the kingdom of heaven. I'm pretty sure that it won't be, you see. But just just giving an example, you see, that's the type of level we're coming up on, man. And some of these Israelites look down on that. <laughs> no, we're gonna be, hey, we're gonna be real life supermen. So the heathen nations won't fucking dare try to raise a hand once they witness our glory, man. You see that? Now verse 12 says what? For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. What, what is Bishop Nate talking about? Russia is going to come down. The, the, the Edomites are going to creep off to Mount Seir, make some weapons and come back and ride. No, man. After that first 1,000 years of the kingdom of heaven, that first dominion, after we pay use that fucking rod divine to bash these heathen heathen up for uh for a millennia they won't fucking dare even think about trying to rebel against the israelites you see even if a, a rebel was to spring up amongst them guess what that it would be so much steer and fit uh so much steer <laughs> as uh so much fear instilled in the heathen they will put that nigga to death and come report it to us. Yeah, we had a rebel try to rise up. No, we had, we had to put that shit down quick because we ain't we ain't 
on that type of time. We we know that y'all are lords. That's the type. That's the type of spirit we're gonna beat into the heathen nations. You see, they're gonna fear us, man. And that's why Esau, the so-called white race, is gonna be made an example of. That's why they're gonna be eradicated before the, before the eyes of the entire world, so they so the world can see this is what happens when you rebel against the Israelites. This is what had. This is what we will do to you. Your entire family tree, we will uproot it from the earth, and then we're gonna make an example out of Esau. Man, the nations ain't gonna fucking try to rise up against us. That's some shit you niggas are adding to the scriptures, man. For what? We don't know. We're gonna be supreme in all aspects of supreme. You see, <laughs> this is what we're coming into, man. This is the glory that we're fighting to enter into. And it's not some low-level type of thing, man. So Isaiah 60 and 13 says what? The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The most high sanctuary is where? Israel. The, the, the land of Israel. Oh, man, say, I was about to say the state. The land of Israel, man. Hey, that's That, that land that uh, sits between the Nile River and the Euphrates. That's the land that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is going to beautify. And we see that that land is mostly desert now. But when the, when the chosen people are back in that land, it's going to be made as the Garden of Eden. Oh, it's going to be made even better than the Garden Eastward in Eden. He says, well, I will make the place of my feet glory. Meaning what? The Most High is going to rejuvenate the planet Earth. You see, all this pollution that's going on, the fucking water's being polluted. You see, and defiled with all manner of trash and plastics and, and oil and rubber up under the uh, up under the supervision of you heathen. All that shit is gonna be changed, uh, cleaned up, and the earth is gonna go, go back. It's gonna go back to a state of being a paradise, man. This is what's coming. You, a lot of you guys, really have a low level outlook on what the scriptures are talking about, man. Because a lot of you don't get it is because the Most High is not dealing with you. He hasn't opened up your, your your spirit fully to receive what's about to happen. You see, because we try to imagine it, and we know it still falls short of what it really what what it really gonna be, and we try to think as outside of the box as we can, and it still falls short to what it's really gonna be. That's how crazy it's gonna be, man. You see, verse fourteen says what. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Do you see that? The heathen nations are going to come and bow before us. They're going to reverence us finally, man. Because now they look down upon us. Once, And that's all a part of the curse. But that time is coming to an end. You see, they're going to acknowledge us as the sons of the Most High. You know why? Because they're going to witness that glory. They're going to witness that power. They're going to witness us live forever. <laughs> you see? You're going to have your favorite fucking Elamite cook. You know what I'm saying? He done been, he done been in your kitchen for, for, for 40 or however, because they're going to live longer too. They're not going to live forever, but they will live longer because what? We, we, we're going to set up a system for them to keep the righteous laws of the Most High, which is going to cause what? Life to flourish. Right, so he might he he might have been your head cook in the kitchen for the last two hundred years. Now it's time for him to go back to the spirit world, and he done raise up his children in the recipes and how 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 you like your how you like your food cooked this way and how you like your lamb prepared that way. How you like your the type of wines you like. He's gonna be schooling his children on how to take care of that position once once he passes away. This this is what this is what's coming, man. <laughs> you see. The heathen are going to be our servants. You're going to have the, uh, the the head heathen that's over your vineyard. The head heathen that's over your garden. The head heathen that's over making your garments. <laughs> you see? We're going to put them in different positions to serve us. And they're going to love it like Proverbs 29 tells you. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. <laughs> you see? And they're going to bow down at our feet, man. You see?
You. <laughs> this is what's coming, man. Jake, you got to get out of that fucking low ass level way of thinking. You see, because a lot of you niggas just want to be here to be on on YouTube forever. You see, seeking out the social media cloud. Social media is about to crash, man. They're about to take all that shit away. But that's as far as Jake takes it, man. Just being a fucking social media uh, 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 star, a uh, uh, YouTube star, to, uh, to preach their doctrine. Because they ain't preaching the most high doctrine. They preaching their doctrine. You see, and they want to do that forever. No, man. We're going on to a higher glory, bro. We're going on to something better. Something everlasting. And it doesn't, you see, until us stand here in fucking Babylon forever, man. Or Esau being in power forever. You see? Verse 15 says what? Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. And that's our land being built up beyond anything we can imagine forever, man. You see, we're gonna see we're gonna see the fullness, you see, the, the, the full flourishing of that land once we go back into it. Cause it don't look it don't look like much right now, and that's just because we're not there and our land is cursed. You see? But when we go back into it, we're gonna see the fullness of it, man. The the the, the paradise <laughs> that the most high has carved out in the earth for us, man. Now the entire earth is ours, but that land is the best piece of land on the planet. And the most high gave it to us. You see, we're gonna and we're gonna witness it be rejuvenated and flourish as the most high always intended it to do. Now, verse 16 says what? Thou shalt also suck the, suck the milk of the Gentiles, which goes into their wealth, and shalt suck the breast of kings. Thou shalt know that I, Yahweh, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Because that's who's telling us he's going to do this for us, man. Jesus Christ ain't telling us this. Jesus, hey, the, the, Jesus Christ, the false Messiah of Christianity, is telling you, God bless America. <laughs> you see? Love is love, man. You see that? That's what the false messiah of Christianity is telling you, telling you. But the God of the Bible, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is telling us that what? He's about to give us all the wealth we can ever want. And it's never going to end. You see? The time of poverty is going to be left here in this final captivity. Now, now listen, this is, this is how... Look, man, <laughs> Jake get a $10,000 check and lose their damn mind. But li listen to the type of wealth we're going to have in the kingdom of heaven. Isaiah 16 and 17. For brass, I will bring gold. And for iron, I will bring silver. And for wood, brass. And for stones, iron. I will also make the house. <laughs> Do you understand what that means? Do you know how... How much uh, 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 there is of, uh, of an abundance of brass? Uh, how can I say? Do you know how abundant brass is? Well, the Most High is telling us that's how gold is going to be in our kingdom. And he's telling us that the streets of our cities are going to be paved with gold. Our walls are going to be paved with gold and inlaid, inlaid with precious stones. Our towers are going to be paved with gold. Do you understand that? Gold towers, gold streets... These are little things that's going to be in the kingdom to come, man. Do you understand how wealthy you have to fucking be to pave your streets with gold? <clears throat> this is another type of level that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is bringing us into, man. This is a different type of glory that no nation. Now, you've, you've had glorious kingdom, uh, heathen nations come up. You see? But none of them can hold a, a fucking candle to what Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is going to uh, give unto his people. You see? So Isaiah 16 and 17 says, For brass I will bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, and for wood, brass, and for stones, iron. And I will also make thy offices peace and thine exactest righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting no destruction within thy borders. Oh, that's a cut to the 1948ers, because they, hey, war is raging over there in the state of Israel right now. You see, on, on the verge of a civil war popping off. 
How can that be the people when prophecy says that there's supposed to be no more violence in that land? You see that? Prophecy exposes everything, man. It says what? But thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise. The sun shall no more be thy light by day. Neither for the brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah shall be unto thee an everlasting light and thy power thy glory. You see that? So no more wicked doctrines and philosophies, man, that our people are fucking mingled in. Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, or whatever it may be. All that shit is going to be a thing of the past because every single Israelite is, hey, well, it starts with the elect first and foremost being brought into the second covenant. And every Israelite after that point will be born into the second covenant in their right mind. Knowing Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, never having to be taught again. Hey, that's another point that shows that we're not in the new covenant because we're still teaching. You see? Verse 20 says what? The sun, the sun shall no more go down. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall the moon withdraw itself. For Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. So we will never lose the wisdom, not to understand it again. We will never go into a state of obscurity again. Now, all that happened because what? We were under the curses. That time is ended, and now our morning is about to be ended. The morning is what? Us being under the curses, man. Us suffering under these fucking heathen. All that's coming to an end. According to what the Most High has promised. You see? All this is going to happen, man. These are not just some words that's just going to sit on the page to never be manifested. No, man. The Most High spoke all these words for it to be fulfilled. So he can ultimately fulfill the promises made unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to their seed after them. You see that? 21 says what? Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. What land? The land that the Most High promised to give unto our forefathers. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands that I may be glorified. And this is why we're about to go through this time of trouble. You see? So we can be saved out of these different situations. And ultimately, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is going to be glorified. You see? <coughs> You see that? All this hell is about to break loose so the, so the remnant can be saved out of these different situations and they're ultimately brought up into that chair with Yahweh Shah when he returns and it's all for the glorification of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. You see? And we're going to be planted back into the earth as trees of righteousness. Never sinning, never going off, never being in this state or condition that we, we find ourselves in ever again. Verse 22 says, What well, a little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation, and I, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, will hasten in his time. You see that? And that's what's going to happen because every Israelite man is going to have multiple wives. You see? And we're going to be what? Being fruitful and multiplying. You see? Each man is going to be like a small nation unto himself because that's how many children we're going to be having with all these different wives we're going to have. And all you Israelite women who have a problem with the uh, doctrine of us having multiple wives, guess what? Your ass is going to be put to death and you will get it right in the kingdom. We don't give a damn about you feeling some type of way. Yes, we're going to have multiple wives. And we're going to have concubines of the heathen nations. You see? Most of don't give a fuck about your feelings. This is what he's, this is what he's ordained for his men to have, for his sons to have. Not going to be sitting around stuck up on your stinking ass all day, thinking that you're supposed to be worshipped, you're supposed to be pedestalized. Hell nah. And all you bitches who are in that mindset, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is going to put your ass to death, man. And a lot of women, a lot more women are going to be put to death in the time of Jacob's trouble than men. Trust and believe that, man. You see? But yes, every Israelite man will have multiple wives and multiple concubines so we can have hundreds of thousands of children. You see, to bring our nation back into the earth. You selfish bitches. <laughs> you see? Think it's all about you. Can't stand you hoes, man. That's a different type of for a topic for a different day. But Isaiah, Isaiah 60 and 22 says what? A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, Yahweh, will hasten it in this time. This is what the Most High is telling us. So if you got a problem with that, you got a problem with the Most High. We already know what the Most High does with any, 
does to anyone who has a problem with what he say he's going to do. He's just going to get your ass up out of the way by destroying you. And, he, and guess what he's going to do? Fulfill everything he said he was going to do in the first place. You see? But this is the glow we're being brought into, man. This is what we're fighting for. You see? Yeah, we're about to go through a time of trouble. You see, very soon. But it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay because we understand and know the end all be all according to the most high's will, man. You see? So I'm going to end it. Lord willing, that was edifying to the elect, man. I'm going to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful of that I out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Abba, Abba.